Hi, good day everyone. Welcome to my channel. This is me again, Mr. Alistair D. Apali alias Emma Watson. So welcome to my channel once again. So for today's lesson, we will be focusing on the topic about sets for our week one grade seven lesson. So are you ready? I can see it in your eyes that you're all excited and very ready to listen and participate with our discussions for this session. So for, for a while, I will be sharing you the screen for our PowerPoint presentation for this, uh, uh, for this uh, session. So to start with, for a while, Okay, so I know you're all excited and waiting for this moment to really learn a lot of things about mathematics. So our first topic really in the first quarter, which is the week one, will be in grade seven, will be related to the picture. So what, the, what can you say about the picture? So to start with our topic, let's describe the picture. Hmm, as you can observe, the picture shows this one. Can you see the picture? I highlight the picture, this one. Okay, can you see the picture? Okay, so it's so obvious, right? The picture shows something like a group of what? A group of figures. You can see like circle, square, irregular, and regular polygons, a group of figures. So we're talking or our topic this uh, session will be something related to groupings. Guess what? What do you think? Okay, our topic this uh, uh, this session will be about the language, the language rather of sets. So for today's topic in week one, we will start to discuss about the language of sets. Again, I'll highlight the language of sets. So to start with, of course, for, for this week of content standards, we re, it's very important for us to be guided with the content standards because these are the standards that we are expected to learn in this session or topic. Okay, can you follow? So for our content standards class, we have here learners or you must demonstrate uh, our uh, understanding of key concepts of sets and the real number system. So that's the content standards that I want you to be guided during the discussions that we have. Is that clear? Yes, it is. So another standards that we have in this topic will be the performance standards. For the performance standards, the learner or you are or you must or the you are expected to formulate challenging situations involving sets and real numbers and solve those in a variety of strategies. So in short, you are not just only learning the content or, or the concept of uh, sets in this topic, but I want you or you are expected to relate it in a real life scenario. So that's application for the knowledge. So you are expected to do that one. So do not be or do not forget the standards that we have for this topic, for the content and performance standards, okay? So now, uh, our main objective for this, uh, for this session will be to describe or describes well-defined sets. So I'll highlight the word well-defined sets. So I want you to remember again the terms that I will be highlighting. So the word well-defined sets, we will be talking more about this one in our discussion as we go over with our lessons this session. Another thing also, we will be talking about subsets, universal sets, and the null set. Of course, we also, or we will also discuss about cardinality of sets. So these are the topics that I want you to learn in this session, for today's session rather. So let's continue. Now, a while ago was the competencies. You are going to describe, right? 
uh, for the contents or topics, of course, as I mentioned, our main goal for this uh, for this session rather is to uh, talk about the language of sets. Under it, we are going to define, which is part of the competency or learning competency, define a set, which is to define a set. Another thing also we're going to uh, talk about the ways in naming a set. And of course, the elements of a set and well-defined set. So are you ready? <laughs> I, I forgot the other one, the cardinality of a set. So are you now ready? I guess you're all ready. I can feel it, believe me. Okay, so ha, there's another one, the finite and infinite sets. Actually, the cardinality of a set Fin and finite and infinite sets will be tackled in the part two of this discussion. For the part one, we will just focus on the definition of set, the ways in naming a set, and elements of a set in a well-defined set. We will stop our discussion in a well-defined set. So again, you are all ready, right? So you don't have a choice but to be ready. So let's just enjoy the things that we are going to talk about in this session. So let's just smile. Don't be pressured. Math is easy, always remember. So let's try this in the activity one. Okay, in your activity, to start with our formal discussion in this topic, let's do first the activity one. As you can see the instruction in there, Look at the objects below. Group them as you see fit and name each group. So let's try to observe the groupings. You can see an apple, lemon, doll, dress, shoes. What else? Orange, orange rather, or tangerine, press a shawl. And then you have it, uh, uh, what, a uh, bear? a ball, another dress, and shoes. So now, I want you to look at the objects, objects rather, below. As you can see, there are a lot of varieties or things there. So you can group them. As you can see, they're how they fit and, and you can name each group. So what do you think? I'll give you time to think about that, okay? So I guess one minute is done. So fast, right? Same with the time. Time is so fast. Okay, so in activity one, I want you to remember the objects below. So now let's try. Let's, let's try to do the analysis part. So I want you to answer the following questions. What are the questions? How many groups can you form? Hmm. I want you to remember the, the, the questions in here. So that you will be guided later in our discussion based on the activity one that I've shown a while ago. How many groups can you form? Mm. Does each object belong to a group? Another thing, is there an object that belongs to more than one group? Have you seen it? Which one? So... Now let's try to, as you can see, based on the, on the analysis part, I want you to just uh, keep your answers in your mind. You can write it in your notebook, okay? Now we can, uh, I want you to remember the different groupings there. So of course, there are a lot of gr uh, groups there. You can group them according to colors, according to types of objects in the activity one. Remember this? Okay, so, so if you have the same idea, you can group them according to fruits, according to colors. So it's up to you. So there, are, uh, we can classify the objects below according to their colors or according to their type. Okay, type of objects. So I hope you'll be able to answer the analysis part. How many groups can you form? And does each object belong to a group? Is there an object that belongs to more than one group? Yeah, there is. Which one? The color and also the, remember, the color and the types. So now let's try to uh, relate the analysis part for the activity one that we have. 
So, actually, since we talk about the word grouping, something, the word groups, the word group is related to the word set. So, when we talk about groupings, something connection with it is the language or the groupings or groupings rather, it is a language of set. So it is something related to set. So I want you to remember that one. So now, a group or collection of objects is called a set. Again, I want you to remember that when we talk about group or collection of objects, we call it as a set. So now we can define a set as a group or collection of objects or any things or anything rather collection of anything or group of anything or collection and group of objects you call it set do not forget the word set okay so i want you to remember the definition of a set a simple definition as a group of objects am i clear Yes, yes, that's very clear. Now, each object in a set is called a member or an element of a set. So again, the, uh, the objects or each object, it, it has what? It has members. So the members in a group or in a given set, we call it element of a set. Again, I'll emphasize this. Element of a set is defined as a member, a member, okay, a member of, a member of object in a set. So if there is a member of a set, we call it element of a set. Let's have an example. Who can give me an example? Fruits. Example, a group of fruits. We have Dorian, Lansones, and Rambutan. So how many members do we have? There are three. We have, again, uh, Rambutan, Lansones, and Dorian. So meaning to say, these fruits are members of the group of fruits. So these three fruits are the members of the set of fruits. So we call it elements of the set. So the elements of a set, we have the durian, lansones, and rambutan. So that's how we classify or we relate the uh, meaning or the concept of element of a set, a member of a set or any object or members of our members in a given set okay so i want you to remember that one so do not forget i'll highlight the word again set and element of a set so do not forget the two terms very important in the language of a set so let's proceed another thing also in our ordinary language we try to make sense of the world we live in by classifying collections of things. Do you agree? Again, I'll repeat, in our um, world or in our ordinary language, language rather, we try to make sense of the world we live in classifying collections of things. So everything in this world is being classified, even our gender. We are classified. Even your sections in the classroom, you are classified. Even in your what? In your sections, you are classified. In your program, you are classified. Correct? So this is what it meant here that in our in the real world, we use the or we are uh, using the concept of set since we classify things in our real world. So now. English has many words for such collections. Do you agree? For example, we speak of a flock of birds. So flock of birds, a herd of cattle. Correct? This is a group of 
A group of cattle or herd of cattle. So that means it's a set. A swarm of bees and a colony of ants. So now these are, or even English uh, use the word or use the concept of sets, the language of sets. So sets can be applied in any uh, aspects of our life or areas of our life, even in our subject matters or other subject matters, okay? So now let's proceed. So I hope you are getting something in here so far. It's raining outside, so please bear with, with the noise of the, of the rain outside. So now we do similar thing in mathematics, same in English. We classify numbers. Do you agree? We classify numbers as whole numbers, fractions, decimals, so on and so forth. Even the geometrical figures and shapes. We classify or group the shapes, correct? In geometry and other things into collection that we call it sets. So the objects in these sets are called the elements of the set again do not forget the objects in these sets are called the elements of the set so when we say element again what does it mean a member of a given set okay a given or yeah um the member of a given set that is what we call elements of the set so i hope you'll be able to grasp the concept so let's now proceed. Now, it's uh, in set, of course, since we're talking about the language of sets, then it uh, we can also um, consider the concept of its language or part of, it, of its language are the symbols that we are using in sets. So I guess it's um, um, time already and it's raining uh, outside. So we can just uh, give a time for us to master the concept of a set and a member of a set or elements of a set. Now, again, as what I said, it is very important to, oh my goodness, the, the, the weather is not, um, does not agree with our uh, discussion or, yeah. So again, please bear with the noise of the rain. I will still continue. So now, it's very important to know the language of set, and part of its of its language is to determine its symbols, or we call it notation. So there are a lot of ways in naming a set based on its notation. So it's very important so that we will be able to uh, understand and read what is really the symbols used in set as part of its language. So there are actually class, there are three ways to describe sets. What are the three ways to describe sets? The first one, we call it the descriptive method. Again, descriptive method. The second one is the list or rooster method. So again, the second type of or ways to describe set is using the list or rooster method. Number three is the set builder notation. So these are the three ways to describe sets. Okay, so these are the notations that we can relate in naming or in describing a set. So I want you to remember the three terms. Let's start with the first method. The first method is the descriptive method. How does it, um, how, how will it name or describe a set using this method? So let's describe first. When we say descriptive method class, I'll highlight it is used when a set can be described by writing a description of its elements. Again, you can use the descriptive method by describing or writing a description of the elements of the given set. So I hope you can still follow even if it's uh, noisy outside. Okay, and now for example, um, 
a set of B. A set of B can be described as colors in the Philippine flag. So meaning to say, in this method, we just describe what is in five or what are the elements in a set B. What are the elements? Colors in the colors, uh, sorry, colors in the Philippine flag. So, so this is how we describe the element of set B. Another thing also, or more examples, let's see if we have more examples. Yes, we have. Set of M. A set of M, using the descriptive method, we, we, we try to describe the elements of the set by describing it as multiples of six between one and 400. So set M now, uh, the elements of set M now is described as multiples of six between one and 400. So that is the descriptive method. Do not forget, in descriptive method, you are going to write a description of the elements of a given set. Another one is the list or rooster method. What's in the rooster method? I want you to differentiate the difference between the list or rooster method from descriptive method. So let's now define how we do the list or risk or rooster method. Okay, in a rooster method or list method, a set can be described by listing from the word itself, listing. Listing all its elements within a pair of braces, as you can see. So we use now in here, we, we can now use the symbol a pair of braces in listing all its elements in a given set. So again, in listing all the elements of the sets, we use the we use a pair of braces under the rooster method or list method. So in short class, each element is separated from the neck by a comma. So again, in rooster method, you are going to list all the elements using or within a pair of braces. In short, each element is separated from the next by a comma. So let's have an example. Okay. For listing, uh, uh, using the listing method or rooster method, observe. Set B, in the example, set B can be written as this. Set B can be written as blue, red, white, and yellow. So imagine the elements we use the, or we list all the elements within a pair of braces. So, so excuse me. So that's how we do the listing methods. Remember, these are the colors, blue, red, white, and yellow separated from the next by a, Comma. So that's how you do the listing method. So another example is set M. Okay, our set M can be written as M is equal to 6, 12, 18 to 396. So as you can see, we are listing or under the set M, we are listing all the elements divisible by 6 or multiples of Six until from 6 to 396. And that's how you do the listing method. You are not just describing the elements of the set, but you are listing all the elements of a given set within a pair of braces. That is rooster method. Okay? So I hope you can now differentiate between descriptive and rooster method. So now, oh sorry, again, please uh, bear with me or with the noise outside. It's really, it's really raining outside. Um, yeah, raining cats and dogs. Okay, now, do not forget again, descriptive method, list method or rooster method. And lastly, 
we will talk about the set builder notation. I guess we don't have enough time. Perhaps because it's raining, we can continue the discussion of the set builder notation in our part two of the discussion. I will be uploading it tomorrow. So if you have learned so far, just click the like button and also please click subscribe and you can follow me and you can post a comment there. What are the things that you find it difficult in the discussion so far? So we will, again, we ended up our lesson for the part one of week one in the rooster method because it's raining outside already, right? So have a good day and see you again for our part two, which is the set builder notation. So thank you for listening, everyone.